During World War II, most Americans viewed Japanese people as the enemy. Reacting out of fear, the government violated rights of its own citizens. This is the story of one man's fight to make it right. Fred was the third of four sons born to Japanese parents in Oakland, California. His parents ran a flower nursery. On December 7th, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, our west coast became a potential combat zone. Living in that zone were more than 100,000 persons of Japanese ancestry. Two-thirds of them American citizens. One-third aliens. We knew that some among them were potentially dangerous. Most were loyal. But no one knew what would happen among this concentrated population if Japanese forces should try to invade our shores. Military authorities therefore determined that all of them, citizens and aliens alike, would have to move. Fearing Japanese Americans could aid the enemy, President Roosevelt signed an executive order forcing West Coast Japanese into internment camps. But the U.S. made no effort to distinguish between loyal and disloyal Japanese Americans. There were no hearings or trials held to determine if they did anything wrong or dangerous. Every family was issued a number that had to be worn and visible at all times. Half of those detained were children. Korematsu's family received military orders to move to the 10th Ram Assembly Center. But 23-year-old Fred stayed behind. He obtained a fake ID and got minor plastic surgery on his eyes to avoid being recognized as Japanese. Two months later, police arrested Clyde Serra when the alleged Spaniard couldn't speak Spanish. He was sent to live in a horse stall at the 10th Ram Relocation Center. Placed in a horse stall with one light bulb, he later remarked that jail was better than this. After six months, he was sent by train on a two-day journey to Utah. Evacuation. More than 100,000 men, women, and children, all of Japanese ancestry, removed from their homes in the Pacific Coast state to wartime communities established in out-of-the-way places. Their evacuation did not imply individual disloyalty, but was ordered to reduce a military hazard at a time when danger of invasion was great. Two-thirds of the evacuees are American citizens by right of birth. The rest are their Japanese-born parents and grandparents. The people are not under suspicion. They are not prisoners. They are not internees. They are merely dislocated people, the unwounded casualties of war. The time, spring and summer of 1942. The place, 10 different relocation centers in unsettled parts of California, Arizona, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and Arkansas. A relocation center, housing from seven to 18,000 people. Barrack-type buildings divided into compartments. 12 or 14 residence buildings to a block. Each block provided with a mess hall, bathhouse, laundry building, and recreation hall. About 300 people to a block. The entire community bounded by a wire fence and guarded by military police. Symbols of the military nature of the evacuation. Each family, upon arrival at a relocation center, was assigned to a single room compartment, about 20 by 25 feet. Barren, unattractive. A stove, a light bulb, cots, mattresses, and blankets. Those were the things provided by the government. The concentration camp at Topaz created them with suffocating dust storms. The camp consisted of 408 buildings, surrounded by barbed wire and guard towers with armed soldiers. Working eight hours per day at the camp, he earned only $12 per month. If you have a feeling that something is wrong, don't be afraid to speak up. Fred claimed the president and military authorities did not have the power to issue relocation orders. He was being discriminated against based on his race. The government argued that evacuation was necessary to protect the country. Fred appealed the federal court decision, and his case came before the U.S. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court stated that the need to protect the country was a greater priority than the individual rights of the Japanese and Japanese Americans. Three dissented. The order was based entirely on racial discrimination rather than military necessity. Moreover, the military order is not reasonably related to the dangers it seeks to prevent. President Ford terminates the executive order and apologizes. We now know what we should have known then. Not only was that evacuation wrong, but Japanese Americans were and are loyal Americans. 
I would like to see the government admit that they were wrong and do something about it so that this will never happen again. A historian discovered evidence that the U.S. knew Japanese Americans posed no threat to the country during World War II. In 1984, Fred Kuromachi's conviction was overturned. In 1988, President Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act. The U.S. admitted wrongdoing, apologized to the survivors, and paid each 20000 He received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Clinton, who compared him to civil rights heroes such as Rosa Parks. One person can make a difference, even if it takes 40 years. The U.S. government should not let the same thing happen to the people of Middle Eastern descent as what happened to the Japanese. No one should ever be locked away simply because they share the same race, ethnicity, or religion as a spy or terrorist. If that principle was not learned from the internment of Japanese Americans, then these are very dangerous times. Fred died March 3, 2005 at age 86. Fred Kuramatsu Day is held in California each year on his birthday to commemorate his journey as a civil rights activist. Today, we remember the dangers of casting stereotypes on entire communities, and we recommit to our country's ideals of protecting civil rights and promoting an environment where people could strive to achieve the American dream based on the content of one's character, not the color of one's skin.